Seven of the 20 amino acids that exist inside our body have side chain groups that are readily ionizable. And what that means is, at certain pH values, these ionizable side chain groups will be able to exchange hydrogen atoms. They can donate and accept hydrogen atoms and that gives them the ability not only to participate in acid-base reactions but to also form ionic bonds because if the side chain groups can form ions the ions have full charges and those charges can participate in forming ionic bonds with other macromolecules so that's exactly what makes these seven amino acids reactive and that's what gives them the ability to participate in a variety of different types of biological reactions that take place inside our body. So what are these seven amino acids? So we have aspartic acid and glutamic acid, our two acidic amino acids, and the rest are histidine, cysteine, lysine, tyrosine, and arginine. Now on top of these ionizable side chain groups found on these seven amino acids, every one of our amino acids also contains ionizable alpha carboxyl groups and ionizable alpha amino group. So remember, every single alpha amino acid contains a central carbon that is bound onto a carboxyl group and onto an amino group. Now, let's take a look at the following table and discuss what it actually tells us. So the first column basically describes that particular ionizable, uh, ionizable group or that particular ionizable amino acid. Now the middle column describes that acid-base reaction that takes place. On the left side we have the acid, on the right side we have the conjugate base that is formed when an H plus ion is actually lost. And the final column describes the pKa value. Now, what is the pKa value? Well, if the pH of our solution in which that molecule is in is equal to the pKa value, then what that means is exactly 50% of the molecules will exist in the acid form and the other 50% will exist in the conjugate base form. So, if we're below a pH of the pKa, so let's say in this particular case, if we're below a pH of 3.1, then the acid form of the molecule will predominate. But if we're above a pH of 3.1, then what that means is this conjugate base form will predominate. And that's exactly why at a normal physiological pH of around 7, every single one of our amino acid contains an alpha called a carboxyl group that exists in the carboxylate ion form because the pH of 7 is above a pH of 3 is above the pH of 3.1. Now, what about the alpha amino group? Well, the alpha amino group contains a pKa of 8.0. And what that means is because our normal physiological pH is 7 and because a pH of 7 is below a pH of 8, what that means is every single one of our amino acids at the normal physiological pH will contain an alpha amino group that will predominate in this form because it is below a pH of of eight. So if we put these two together, we see that because at the normal physiological pH, this will be negatively charged and this will be positively charged, these two charges will essentially cancel out. And so the net charge on that amino acid at the normal physiological pH will depend on the charge that is found on that side chain group. And remember, a zwitter ion or a dipolar form of the amino acid basically means it will exist with this negative charge and this positive charge. Now, let's actually focus on these seven amino acids that have ionizable side chain groups. So let's begin with aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Now, both of these acids, both of these amino acids contain a side chain group that contains a carboxylic acid. And the pKa value of this carboxylic acid is 4.1. 
So what that means is if we're at 4.1, we'll have 50% of, of, of the acid and 50% of the conjugate base. If we're below a pH of 4.1, this will predominate. If we're above a pH of 4.1, this will predominate. And what that means is at the normal physiological pH, because that is higher than 4.1, these ions will predominate over these neutral species. And so because they're going to have a full negative charge, they can actually form many ionic bonds. Now let's move on to histidine. Histidine has pKa of 6.0, which is actually relatively close to the normal physiological pH. And that's exactly what makes histidine very special because this is so close to the normal physiological pH of our cells. This amino acid that contains this side chain group can actually readily exchange our H atoms. It can donate H atoms and it can also accept H atoms on this nitrogen. Now, what about cysteine? Well, cysteine is that amino acid that can participate in forming disulfide bridges. And not only that, it has a pK of uh, 8.3. And what that means is if we're at 8.3, if our pH is at 0.3, 50% will exist in this form and the remaining will exist in this negatively charged form. So if we're in a very basic solution, let's say a solution with a pH of 10, all of our cysteine molecules will predominate, will exist in this ion form. And this will be able to form ionic bonds with positively charged species. Now, lysine, tyrosine, and arginine have a very basic pKa value. It's above 10. For lysine, it's 10.8. For tyrosine, it's 10.9. And for arginine, it's all the way at 12.5. And what that means is at the normal physiological pH, these three amino acids will always exist in this form. In the tyrosine case, we have a neutral nonpolar side chain group. In this case, we have a very polar hydrophilic side chain group because we have those full positive charges. And so at the normal physiological pH, these two amino acids will be able to form ionic bonds, but this one will act as a very hydrophobic molecule and so it will be found inside that protein structure because usually on the outside we have the polar water molecules and this will observe the hydrophobic effect and will tend to interact with the nonpolar side chains found inside that protein. So these are the seven ionizable amino acids. It's ionizable because they have these side chain groups that can lose or gain H atoms at specific pH values. Now all 20 of our amino acids contain an alpha carboxyl group and an alpha amino group. And so technically at specific pH values, all of our amino acids can actually gain and lose H atoms. But because normally our body is at a specific pH value at around seven, this is usually negatively charged, this is usually positive char positively charged, and so these two charges usually cancel one another out. And the actual charge on that amino acid depends on what the charge is on our side chain group of that amino acid. 